In this video, I am talking about Maker 50mm f1.2 lens. I think that's how you say it. If you are here for the first time, my name is Pav, and on this channel, I talk about all things photography and video. Cameras, lenses, reviews, and more. If this is something that you are interested in, then please consider subscribing. If you are not watching this video on my channel, as some of my reviews of lenses like, like this one seem to wander off my channel, please search for Pav as Z, Pav as Z to find me on YouTube and then consider subscribing. Thanks. Uh, this is a, an ultra wide 50mm prime lens that is available for most mirrorless cameras. L mount, Sony E, Nikon Z, and Canon EOS RF, I think it's called. Make it have been around for a while, and you can find their super cheap budget lenses easily on Amazon. And until now, I was not really interested in using any of them or reviewing them. But as I was looking for another ultra wide prime for my Lumix S5, I decided to give this specific lens a chance for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it is the right size for my hands and for my S5 filming rig. It's not a small lens, but also before I do talk about its performance, it looks actually good. Obviously the lens size or what it looks like should not be a decisive point when it comes to choosing a lens, but how it works and what kind of images of, or footage you can capture with it. I don't know what I was expecting, but the image quality this lens delivers is just outstanding, in my opinion, even wide open at f1.2. I wouldn't necessarily say that it is soft, I don't really think it is. It is actually sharper than most of other f1.2 manual lenses that I have tried before, but nailing that perfect focus at f1.2 is always going to be more challenging. The images captured with this lens are vibrant and really on par with lenses double or triple its price. Although it is a fully manual experience which makes it a bit slower to shoot with, I never really missed autofocus while using it. There's just something special doing it the old way and so much more rewarding in the end. This lens certainly delivers images that are good enough for pro work in my opinion. If you are not in a rush and have time to dial that perfect focus by hand as with this lens you have to. As expected images get sharper throughout when closing the aperture down to f2, f4 and f8 but this goes all the way to 11, I'm, I mean f1.2. These go to 11. And that's what I'm really drawn to when shooting with it. It's not perfect optically but that somehow gives it more character. There's some funky flaring and ghosting going on when shooting towards the bright lights. Maybe not a sought after feature but certainly it can add to the vintage look and feel of the images. Chromatic aberration is quite rife when shooting wide open, not unusual and not tragically bad either. The biggest issue is the severe bulging visible on images with vertical or horizontal lines in them. This is however fairly easy to fix in post and even could be corrected automatically on import into Adobe Lightroom with a homemade preset if you are using Lightroom for editing of your photos. Really nice, smooth and sometimes swirly bokeh only as to the vintage feel this produces and something that defines the character of this lens. Overall, I'm very impressed with quality this lens delivers. It is certainly not a novelty toy as a lot of people would think. Well, I thought that and I was wrong. It's not a toy. Video performance, I think it's a great lens for filmmakers. Yes, of course you get the super shallow depth of field wide open and it is way more forgiving when filming than when taking photos with it. But also its size and build contribute hugely to how you film with it and what results you can achieve. Great lens alternative to cinema lenses at the fraction of the cost. It delivers very good looking video and a lens that could be taken seriously if you are after that elusive cinematic look. Clickless aperture ring, although I never understand those on ultra wide aperture lenses like this one. You buy it for the shallow depth of field and then you close the aperture when it is too bright. It, it makes no sense. I use ND or variable ND filters to control my brightness width and the aperture ring to control the look, which I don't need clickless aperture ring for. Anyway, this one doesn't click if that's what you want. Build quality, it looks and it feels like a very well-made lens. 
it is well made. All hard plastic, the same stuff you see on premium brands lenses. It's not a small lens, but not huge either. If you don't need lens to be as small as possible, then this feels just right and proportional to all current mirrorless cameras. Everywhere I looked, it states different length, but this L-mount version is exactly 10 centimeters long without the hood. As I mentioned before, clickless aperture ring, which is a very firm and nice to turn. Focus ring is a little bit softer to turn, but there is no slag before it actually moves. There's a little bit of plastic on plastic rubbing when turning the focus ring. A little bit annoying, but not tragically bad. Supplied hood is very flimsy and plasticky and there is 67 millimeter filter thread. It's not the lightest 50 millimeter either, weighing solid 620 grams. What I really like is the focus ring is contoured. It's, it's got these standard uh, ridged areas and these curved in areas in between. Not only great for getting your fingers on it when focusing, but also superb when attaching the gears for the follow focus system. They just grab a bit tighter than an usual round smooth ring. There's no electronic contact with the camera so you don't have any exit information recorded to your photos. There's no stabilization or weather sealing either. The lens comes in Sony and Nikon and Canon mounts obviously but it looks like it was designed for Lumix S5 with its red ring accent matching red accents on the camera. Value for money? very decent quality images and video this lens produces put it in a completely different category than what I thought it belongs to. It's not cheap and nasty lens, but one that can really compete with lenses that are much more expensive than this. It retails for $360, which is crazy considering that it is a f1.2 lens and one that actually delivers good results. Yes, it has got stiff competition from 7 Artisans and TT Artisans and others. I can't say that it is better than my favorite 7 Artisans 50mm f1.05, but it's a completely different lens even though it is 50mm as well. It is a very good lens that it is priced well and competitively and while it is an amazing value for money if you want something that is fun to shoot with and has got more character than your usual clinically perfect autofocusing lenses. Conclusion, I'm not gonna lie, Mika would be the last brand I would look into when looking for a good quality ultra wide aperture prime lens. Until now, my opinion about them was based on their lenses popping up all the time on Amazon searches when you search for anything with the word lens in it. These would be super cheap budget novelty models, so my opinion never was actually based on any experience using them, but just that. And I think a lot of you out there would have the same opinion as me based on just presumption and prejudice. I can't obviously talk about all their lenses and there seems to be a lot of them in their catalog but I can only have an opinion about this one and I mean literally this one that I have been using as I can't guarantee that they all will be manufactured and produced in exactly the same way as this one. I have seen few reviews in which other photographers say it is not sharp at all wide open and, and this one, this one absolutely is. You can't expect from it the same results at f1.2 as you would get from Canons, Nikons or Sigmas but if you take it for what it is, cool affordable tool to be creative with then this is a great lens to have fun with. And this is it from me. If you like this video, please give me the thumbs up. Comment below and tell me what you think about this lens and budget ultra wide aperture lenses like this one. Consider subscribing and follow me on Instagram for more photos and videos from all of my reviews. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Make Mika, 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 Mika. The biggest issue. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Wank. As I mentioned before, clickless. Hi. The supplied hood is very flimsy and plasticky and there is a 67... Ooh, hey! You can't expect from it the same results as... Ah, oh, how many mistakes!